Hey everybody, this episode of the Betty White Show deals with some heavy issues. In particular, there was a lot of talk about suicide. If that subject bothers you or you think you might have trouble handling it, do me a favor and watch something else. I'll understand. Throughout this series, we've seen what a weenie Fletcher is. He's constantly second-guessing his line deliveries, is always asking John if he did it right, and has trouble making decisions. Right now, the interior of their house is being repainted, and he and his wife, Marion, have been staying with Joyce and Mitzi. Are Fletcher and Marion up yet? She is. I just heard her gargling. She hums when she gargles. Same song every day. Mule train. <laughs> How did I ever get roped into letting them stay with us while their house was being turned? Look at it this way, Joyce. They'll probably be leaving soon. That's what they said two weeks ago. The big problem is Fletcher won't make a decision about anything. And he always starts the morning with the same joke. Good morning, everybody. Morning, Fletcher. Hi. Looks like we're in for some real Mexican weather. <laughs> oh, what kind of weather is that? Chilly today. Hot tamale. <laughs> That's the one. You want to hear the funniest thing? <laughs> Chili today, hot tamale? <laughs> I, I had a dream last night that all the painters were finished and, and we could finally move out of here. <sighs> Isn't that funny? I've been having that same dream. <laughs> I just now called them and they said all they had left to do was to paint the bedroom and, and we could go on home. I knew I recognized Florence Hallett from somewhere. If you did too, you may have been a fan of Night Court. She took over the role of the stoic bailiff after her predecessor, Selma Diamond, died of lung cancer while the show was in production. In a perfect demonstration of Hollywood weirdness, Ms. Hallett died of lung cancer less than a year into her only season on the show. Both were heavy smokers and both died early. Look and learn. Did they say how long it'll take? Oh, just one day, and, and they can get started as soon as Fletcher decides what color. <laughs> Fletcher has to decide what color. Uh-huh, that's the one decision that Fletcher always likes to make himself. <laughs> Fletcher's going to decide the color. Let me help you out. Realtor beige is always a good choice in case you ever want to sell the house. I'll go tell the painters. Last time it took him a month and he still wasn't satisfied. A month? Oh, but that's not going to happen again. I learned my lesson. Oh, good. This time I'm not rushing into it. I repeat, Realtor Beige. If you suddenly want a different color, shine a colored light on it and presto, there you go. Last, our star is ready. Perhaps we can get started now. John, I need your help. Fletcher and his wife are still at our house because he can't decide on a color for their bedroom. Maybe you could talk to him. Joyce, please, I told you when we were married, don't include me in your private life. I wonder why the marriage didn't work out. John says, what should I say to him? He's always asking John what to do, so here's a silly idea. Tell him what color to paint his bedroom. I'm sorry I'm late, John, but I've just been looking at these color chips. Would you please sit down, Fletcher? These are like peanuts. Once you get started, you can't stop. Maybe for some. I start with those things and I get so overwhelmed so quickly I have to put them down and tell my wife to pick. I don't know if that's an ADD thing or an Irving thing. John, maybe you can help me. Which color should I pick? Beige. Beige? Yes. Beige is beautiful. <laughs> it goes with everything, even dirt. All those agreed, say aye. 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 Beige it is. Told you. Now if he can just figure out which of those chips is beige, maybe they can get started looking at the script. Fletch and Marion are back in their house, Joyce and Mitzi have their home back, and Joyce has fixed a terrific dinner to thank John for helping get rid of them. What are we having? Well, I thought we'd start with your favorite hors d'oeuvre, followed by Vichy Soise, Beef Wellington, Asparagus Hollandaise, and Cherries Flambe. Oh, shucks, I had my heart set on a chili dog. <laughs> Naturally, as quick as they try to begin eating, there's someone at the door. Hi. Mary, what a nice surprise. 
John, look who's here, Marion Huff. John, how are you? Fine, thank you. I, uh, I, I hope I'm not interrupting anything. Not at all. We were just about to have dinner. Oh, my. I, I, I've come at a bad time. I'm so sorry. Well, that's all right. Was there something you wanted to talk to me about? Yes, but it can wait. Good. How about you wait at home and she'll call you when she's free to talk? Well, suit yourself. <laughs> I'll wait till you finish dinner. Not real big on taking hints, is she? Let's find out what she wants. Listen, if there's something the matter, I mean, I'd, I'd like to help any way I can. I, are you sure, Joyce? Of course I am. Just tell me what you want me to do. Help me carry in my suitcases. I've just left Fletcher. <laughs> Apparently, these people are like vampires. The first time you let them into your home, it becomes an open invitation. So what's the problem? We, we, we don't do anything. We don't go anywhere. All he wants to do is come home at night and sit in his vibrating chair. <laughs> Five billion men in the world, and I wind up with the one who vibrates. There's a fun solution to that. Climb into it with him. If you sit just right, it could really get interesting. Marion, exactly what do you want from life? I want to have fun. I, I, I want to bust loose, go crazy. Girls, what are we going to do today? Well... I know. Why don't we all go get a henna rinse? Dyeing your hair red is busting loose. Granted, that's about as exciting as my life gets, but I thought she was after a little more than that. <laughs> I have to go to work. So do I. You mean I'm, I'm going to spend the day here alone? I'm afraid so. Oh, well, if that's the case, I, I might as well go home. Good for you. That's the spirit. Sure. As, as long as I'm going to be living here, I might as well go pick up the rest of my stuff. Fletcher makes two mistakes. First, he has a few drinks. Then he finally makes a decision about something. Fletcher, this is crazy. Come off of there before you fall off. Don't come near me or I'll jump. Uh, Fletcher, you aren't serious about this. Come on. You're just trying to show that you're upset and, and desperate and confused. Besides, this isn't even a real building. <laughs> Don't come any closer or he'll do serious harm to himself. We all know how painful a stub toe can be, so just back off. Marion just arrived, but Fletch won't come down until she says she's coming home. Marion is confused. Now she's not sure what she wants. Joyce isn't having much luck helping her sort it out. Joyce, hello. Marion, the truth is, since Joyce and I split up, I've spent every day of my life regretting it. There's nothing in life that I dread more than going home every night to an empty apartment. Don't you and Fletcher make the same mistake we did. Wow, when John opens up, he doesn't mess around. Marion is convinced, and she's coming home. Done all those things you said about missing me. That was nothing but a crock, was it? That's right, Joyce. <laughs> <laughs> but a nice crock. And so are you. <laughs> Thanks, I think. All is well until John appears at Joyce's door with a suitcase. Guess who moved in with me while their bedroom is being repainted? <laughs> Lucky you. Joyce, they're driving me crazy. Oh, that's too bad. <laughs> so I was wondering if I might impose on your hospitality. This is getting better and better. She's not above taking advantage of a captive audience. Well, of course, John, it's never an imposition. Thank you, Joyce. I was hoping you'd say that. Fletcher, Marion. <laughs> Nighty-night, Joyce. And neither is he. I did not see that coming, and it did make me laugh. But as usual, the rest of the episode fell flat. There's way too much time where nothing is happening. We had a several-minute interlude in the bar where Fletcher was moaning that his life is over, John was being cynical about it, and Hugo was telling bad jokes about it. 
I get that the idea was to establish that Fletch was suicidal, but instead of three guys sitting in a bar doing nothing, maybe have Hugo in his usual dress and heels try to stop Fletcher from climbing the ladder up to that ledge. I draw on the ledge and get him, uh, but uh, I don't want the stagehands looking up my dress. <laughs> or... She took over the role of blah, 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 blah. good grief, slow down. If you did too, you may know but come on, good grief. Been a fan of Night Court. She took come on! Tell him what to call <laughs> Naturally, no sooner do they begin the blah, 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 blah. one word at a time. Hi friends. We had some fun with Fletcher being suicidal, but only to a height of six feet. The scene was deliberately silly, but that feeling is very real. I learned how real in 1993, not long after my mother's death. I had been shot down career-wise multiple times just that year. We were slowly having to come to grips with the fact that we had a child with a mental illness, and my wife had just finished nursing school and couldn't find a job. My mom had always been my best friend, and suddenly she was gone. I was lower than I had ever been and felt worthless. I started making a plan to disappear. I knew how I'd do the actual deed, and I came up with a way to do it and just vanish so my family didn't have to deal with the stigma. Thankfully, a sharp-eyed physician's assistant spotted my condition and forced me to confront it. In 1993, too many people didn't have that. There was no good way to reach out to someone. Today there is. Dial 988 and someone is there for you. If you're feeling that way or can feel yourself slipping in that direction, call. Don't wait until you reach the point that I did. Because I can tell you, it's a dark, scary place. Call 988 and talk to someone. Don't give up because this world will be diminished if you're not in it.